have when they sing. God bless you on your travels and your journeys this morning in the name of Jesus. I want to go right to the Word of God this morning, Acts chapter 3, verse number 3. The Word of God tells us one day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Now a man, if you don't mind standing for the reading of God's Word, now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg for those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter asked, looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. And when all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Amen. God bless you this morning. I want to preach on this. Don't get too comfortable with the person I used to be. Don't get too comfortable with the person I used to be. Why don't you turn to five people and high five them this morning and tell them don't get used to the too comfortable with the person I used to be. Amen. All right. High five, five people around you. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise before you see this morning. All right. I hope you come to church today. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. The book of Acts is about a, I'm going to just kind of teach you for just a moment here this morning. The book of Acts is a tremendous beginning uh, about the church. It talks about church growth and its greatest potential. And really, as we study this chapter this morning, this, this book of Acts, we find out that the book of Acts is not only for that local group, but from right here in this, this pinnacle point in this chapter, things begin to change throughout the world for the church. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, this morning, if we come to church for us, then the church becomes a club. If we come to church for us and we build the church for us, the church becomes a club. But if we, we build the church for God, then the church has to open up its arms and begin to reach all of those around us in the name of Jesus and reach for the hurting, reach for the lost, reach for those that are a different, different color than we are, reach for those that don't have the same dialect as we do. We must open up our arms and reach for the world. God wants the church to open up its hands and to stretch out to the whole world. Can I get an amen this morning? Amen. Come on, can I get an amen today? Amen. Let me tell you what, church, we're not here to make the load harder. We're not here for to load down the church and the world, the people that come to this church with man-made rules and ideals. We're here to actually lighten the load. To help them get across the bridges. To help them climb the mountains. To help wipe away the tears. To help rejoice with them when it's time to rejoice. Come on, in Jesus' name. Amen. You see, we don't preach the law anymore because the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ replaced the old system. Therefore, women can take the veils off today. We don't live under the veil anymore. Men and women, amen, they just have to dress modest. They don't have to be the oddest. They just have to dress modest according to the word of God. We can even watch TV and play sports. Men can even have beards and goatees because guess what? Jesus used to have one. Amen. We're here to lighten the load, not to make the load harder. Amen. We're here to leave the word of God alone and to present it just like it is in the word of God. We don't have to. The Word, the Lord, God Almighty, doesn't need us to change His Word. In fact, if we add to or take away, we shall be punished according to Revelations. 
We're here to leave the word of God just like it is. It's fine, just like it is. It can go forth unta- un- uh, uh, un- we can- untampered with this morning. We can just let it go forth unfettered today because the word of God is good enough. Amen. Just like it is. Because the Lord wants the hands of the church to be reaching for the lost. Come on. Amen. Amen. This is not a religious church today, so you can put your hands together. We're not at a funeral this morning. Jesus was always challenging his church to grow. Somebody shall grow. Amen. Jesus said, get these people something to eat. And the disciples said, there's 20,000 people here, Lord. What do you want us to do? So he challenged them to believe that a little lad had some loaves and some fishes and that he had the power to take that, those loaves and fishes and multiply it so that those 20,000 people could be fed. And not only fed, but baskets load remain above and beyond. He is here to challenge the church even today. He said to the disciples, cast your nets on the other side. Jesus, they said, Lord, don't you know we've been fishing all night long and we have caught no fish. What difference would it make if we just simply cast our nets from one side of the boat to the other? But Jesus stretched, wanted them to stretch out. He challenged them. And when they cast their nets on the other side of the boat, praise the Lord, church, praise God, their nets were full of fish so much that their boat almost sunk because they had so much fish, so many fish. By the way, Jesus says, I will also make you fishers of men. Praise God. He doesn't just want us to do our secular job this morning, but the Lord God Almighty wants to use our skills and our talents to challenge this world and to save this world from being lost and to being saved and to finding Jesus Christ crucified and resurrected this morning. Amen. Amen. Listen, church, the Lord wants us to remind, remain growth-minded. The Lord wants to stretch us. The Lord wants to expand us. The Lord wants to take us like Jabez and to expand our territories. You see, what I'm here to say today is don't get too used to the person that I used to be. Don't get too used to the man that begged at the gate all his life. Because that's the way he used to be. But praise God, something different has crossed his path this morning and he will no longer be the same as he used to be. Amen. You see, the Lord told his church he would expand them in every way possible in Acts chapter 1. He says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be witnesses in Jerusalem. That's one place. And in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. He wanted to expand them. He says, I will give you the power to expand. You don't just have to be an El Paso church. You don't just have to be a Texas church. You don't just have to be a church in in the United States. But you, I will put inside of you the power to expand to the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. Praise God. I wanted to give you this quote this morning. It says, if opportunity doesn't knock, build a door. Praise God. Because the Lord it will give you the power to walk through closed doors. The Lord will give you the power to build a door where there is no door. Can I get an amen in the house today? Y'all get ready because I'm getting John prepared to give me some preaching music from now on. I'm, I'm having him crack out the organ. Brother Johnny, you're going to like it next week. I'm getting Brother Johnny, Brother John ready. He's a little, he got a little timid on me this morning, but I'm working him over in Jesus' name. I need some preaching music in Jesus' name. See, Peter and John claimed to have the power, but this day they would get the chance to demonstrate that they had the power. Amen. I want to give you four angles to this story that I read to you a moment ago. Number one, I want to talk to you about the power of partnership. Because Peter and John were partners. They not only were partners in where they were at today, but previous in their previous life uh, as, as regular secular people, they were partners also. They were fishermen. And they fished for a living. And now they have joined together under the power and the yoke and the and the and the marriage of Jesus Christ being in their life. 
And now they've become partners for Jesus Christ. How many have a friend that's a partner with you this morning? Whether it's your husband or wife or girlfriend or boyfriend or you have a partner at work this morning. There's nothing like the power of a partnership. A friend is someone who knows all about you but still loves you. Amen. And I praise God for partnerships. I praise God for friendships. Because they, when they know everything about you, they still love you. And Peter and John, praise God, knew everything about each other. But they were still partners for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. See, I ask you this morning, who is on the other side of what you are today? Amen. See, God doesn't want to change your skill set. God doesn't want to make you into a, a, a totally different person this morning. God put what you are today he made you what you are this morning so that you can in turn take those skills that he's already placed in your life and he wants to make you a worker for the kingdom of God. He wants to take the partnership of you and the Holy Spirit inside of you and to take that and invest in you and to make something great out of you in Jesus' name for his kingdom. Amen. We need each other. Look at your neighbor and say, I need you. We need each other. We need partnerships. Do you know that John and Peter and John needed each other? They were always competing against each other because John outraced him to the empty tomb. But guess who went inside first? Peter did. See, they needed to get there fast so John got them. But Peter had the courage to go on through. We need each other. See, we are attracted to people who are different than we are. And then you know what we try to do? We try to change them once we get to know them. That's the way my wife and I, we've been together forever now, 28 years, I believe. Wonderful years. Actually, it actually feels like no time. Learn from that one, Jacob. But let me tell you something. You know what, what? We are very different people. I didn't marry another Todd. Can you imagine that? If, I, if you had two like me. We need, but we need each other. We are different because God made us different. And it's our differences that make us dynamic. See, people don't have to share your preference in order to have the same purpose in life. Let's celebrate our dynamics. Can you imagine if I'd married somebody like me? We called him Toddy, her Toddy, actually her Toddy. Making all kind of mistakes. What if Art had married Artie? See, what if Leslie had married another Leslie? Then it means Elvis would get no food because she's tired of cooking. She told me that last week. She said, I'm tired of cooking. See, we need to stop bickering about our differences and we need to start celebrating what, how God has made us dynamic as a team and the partnership and the power of partnership. Can you put your hands together if you've got a partner in Jesus' name? Amen. See, Shaq needed Kobe. Right? You're from California. Kobe needed Shaq. The children of Israel needed Moses, and Moses needed the children of Israel. Cleveland needs LeBron. Now, LeBron, LeBron doesn't need Cleveland. That's the only thing I can say about that. Amen. See, our differences make us great. But God is here today challenging us to stretch a little bit. We don't have to be a cult where everybody's the same, and we force everybody to... To believe it just exactly like we believe it and to do everything we do, that's a cult. God doesn't want us to be a cult because God made us different for a reason. So that we could attract people from all over this city and from all over the state and from all over the world to, him, to how great he is. In Jesus' name. Even this man had partners. In the scripture that I'm reading to you this morning, verse 2 says, Now a man who was lame from his birth was carried to the temple gate. 
called beautiful. Where he was put, look at this, every day to beg from those who came into the temple courts. Somebody carried him. He had partners that would carry him to the gate. I don't know how they worked it out. I don't know if they said, you know what, uh, John, you take Mondays and, and Josiah, you take Wednesdays and Thursdays and then I'll pick him up on Friday. I don't know how they did it. You got a truck, you can get him over there in his, his wheelchair and his, all his stuff. But they had partners, and it, the Word of God says they carried them there. Amen. The Bible, you know, he was in an ugly condition, but he was in a beautiful place. Praise God. You might come here today in an ugly condition, but you're in a beautiful place. Because we have a beautiful Savior. We have a beautiful King. We have a one that can come in and change your life today and, and make you fresh and new under His glow of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be also. So when partners get together in the name of Jesus, even if it's just two, and if there's three, praise God. But even if there's just two, the Word of God says He is in the midst of a partnership. There is power in a partnership. And this man has some partners. But let me tell you this. These, his friends, his partners had, could only take him so far. They could only take him to the gate. That was as far as they could take him. Was to the gate of that beautiful temple. And guess what, brothers and sisters? It tells me one thing this morning. That he needed some new partners to take him further. See, his current contacts on his iPhone were taking him as far as they could take him. They were helping him as much as they could help him. But to be healed, he needed new partners. Amen. Praise God. Church, some of your friends are taking you as far as they can take you. Praise God. Some of your connections have, have helped you as much as they can help you. But praise God, there's a partnership with the Holy Spirit that can happen in your life today that will take you further than you've ever gone before. And there's healing where the Holy Spirit wants to take you this morning. See, Peter did the... Look at that. I want to tell you about partnerships. Peter did the reaching. He did the preaching. He did most of the, the social aspect of their partnership. And what did John do? John, John was kind of the silent partner. He, but you know what? He didn't have to say, I've got your back. Peter knew he had his back. Praise God. Let me tell you what, brothers and sisters. If you have to constantly tell somebody you got their back, then something's probably wrong because you're trying to convince yourself that you do have their back. And let me tell you what, brothers and sisters. If you tell somebody you got their back, please have their back. I let this, I, I, I was fooled once because someone said they had my back and they actually didn't and it really let me down. Please, if you tell somebody you got their back, then have their back. Praise God. The Word of God says in, in, in the third verse, when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him and asked, and as did John, then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave his attention expecting to get something from them. He was looking for change. But praise God, a different kind of change was coming his way that day. Then Peter said, silver and gold, hey, the kind of change you're looking for, I don't have. But the kind of change I've got in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up right now and walk in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And watch this. The word of God says in verse number 7, taking him by the right hand. Let me tell you what, the right hand is the symbol of authority. See, this man had been ruled by paralysis. That was his authority. Paralysis was his authority. Every day, paralysis told him where to go, where to sit, who would come and get you and move you. That was his authority. But this day, amen, Peter, in the name of Jesus, stretched out the hand of authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he took authority over his situation. 
Praise God. And he helped him up. And the Bible says instantly. Praise God. Not tomorrow. Not three weeks from now. But instantly. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit began to work on his body. And the virtue of Jesus Christ began to go to his ankles and his feet. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to turn to somebody and say there's power in the name of Jesus. And there's power in partnerships. I'm talking about the power of the right path. The power of the right path. Give this man some credit because he knew the path he needed to be on. He didn't want to go to the club or the liquor store and wash away his pain and his troubles. He didn't end up at the crack house or the harlot's house. But he ended up on the pathway to the church where they would go to pray. You got to give him credit. There's the power. He, he was on the right path. And there's power in keeping the right path. He wasn't looking for a quick fix. He said, hey, friends of mine, you can't help me much. But if you could just help me get on the pathway where they go to pray. Amen. Praise God. You coming to church today. When you came to church today, you put yourself on the right path. And there's power on the right path. You may have something in your life this morning that has really messed you up. Messed your life up. Messed your body up. Messed your mind up. But praise God, you have put yourself, by coming to the house of the Lord, you have put yourself on the right path. Amen. Amen. It's just a matter of time before you get your healing if you're on the right path. You better Google sync the right path. Get your calendar set. To where you're always on the right path. And the beginning of that is the house of God. Church, this man, he, he knew he needed to be on the path to church. Church, let us always remember to put our church, God's church, on that path where hurting people need something from him. In Jesus' name. The Bible says instantly his feet and his ankles receive strength. Amen. I know something about ankles. Praise God. I, I, we, my family is the authority on ankles. And I can tell you one thing. It's not just good enough to have your feet working. But you need your ankles working in Jesus' name. And the word of God says that, 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 that instantly, praise God, just like instant grits happen. Praise God. His ankles and his feet Receive strength in Jesus' name. And he got up, praise the Lord, and he began to walk from that moment on. Think about this, brothers and sisters. He had never been able to walk. He was lame from his birth. Something was wrong. He carried a con he was born with a condition. He was born in the wrong environment. He was born across the tracks. He was born with an alcoholic father. He was born with somebody that abused him. He was born with the condition he was in. Amen. And some folks have also been born. They have been lame from the birth. Their flesh has been tampered with in the inside of the womb. They didn't hardly have a chance when they stepped out on this earth. But praise God, I serve a God today that if you're on the right path this morning, amen, praise God, that if you're on the right path, he is going to give you power and strength in your ankles and your feet, and you're going to be able to walk out of that condition in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See, he was looking for one kind of change. But he got another. He was thinking on the wrong level, Sister Case. He came looking for a strength that would get him through the day. A change, change that would get him through today. But what he actually received. I like the way the scripture says it. It says what had happened was. 
And what had happened was he was looking for change. Silver and gold. But praise God, God had something way higher on a different level than what he was looking for. You might have come to church today just to be able to get through this week. But I'm preaching about a power that if you can tap into it this morning, will not only cure your week, but it will change the rest of your life. And that power is available in this house today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to give you two quick, more, quick, two quick points this morning. Number one, n- number two, n- number three, actually. I'm going to talk about the price. Jesus said, count the cost. And anything worth something's never going to feel good all the time. The cost of, a, of obtaining, the cost of anything is what you're prepared to do to obtain it. And I want you to know that, that this was a great miracle. And you would think that the church would be happy about this healing happened to this man that had been laying from his birth. But the church folks got worried because they were worried about their positions being taken away from them. And they worried that the rise of this Jesus thing would threaten their existence at what they had been doing all their lives. And so, because of this miracle and the healings and when it happened in time frames, they ultimately threw Peter in prison for this miracle. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, change will usually cost you something. Whether it's you're changing out of relationships, changing away from relationships, changing your pathway in life, changing your job, Changing your prayer life, changing your fasting life, changing the way, changing the way you do business on a regular basis. Change will cost you something. And I want to ask you, are you do you really what want what's in the store? Or are you just window shopping this morning? Because if you want what's in the store, if you want what God's got for you inside of the store this morning, it's gonna cost you more than just window shopping. We're not just passing by. And having a snow cone and ice cream and sitting out and looking through the window this morning. I'm here today asking if anybody wants to purchase and go in and buy something this morning. To get a hold of what God's got for you today. You see, these disciples walked away from everything to follow Jesus. But to them, Brother Elvis, it was worth it. It was worth it because they believed that the kingdom that would come in the afterlife was greater than the kingdom they walked in. Talk about the price. I want to talk about the power of praise now. I'll close with this. The Bible says that this man, when he was healed, he jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking, praise God, and jumping and praising God. Church, there's power in praise. I want you to stand to your feet this morning and put your hands together and begin to praise the Lord. Because there is power in praise today. There is power when you praise God. Because watch this. When all the people saw him walking and praising God. Let's just stop there for just a moment. He became a testimony. Because they all knew who he was. And what his condition was. But when he was healed, praise the Lord. He began to demonstrate 
how good God was. Church, don't ever forget to be thankful this morning for what God has done for you. For the blessings that God has put in your life. It might not be perfect, praise the Lord, but you've got life. You've got your children. You've got your health. You've got things. And some of you even have wealth this morning. You've got a house. You've got a car. You've got a job. You've got people that love you. Hey, you ought to be praising God today. Amen. You're in a beautiful place this morning. You're in a beautiful place this morning. You don't need drugs to make you happy. You don't need a joint to alter your mind. You're not just happy because you're going to the barbecue this afternoon. See, this man was happy because his whole life was changed forever. He literally got strength in his ankles and his feet. He was literally, this is the first day, brothers and sisters, that he was able to leave the gate by himself. Amen. He got to leave by himself. He, his destination was different now. He could control where he wanted to go and when he wanted to leave. He didn't have to wait for the truck to come through with his friends to throw him in the back and him wave at everybody as they passed by in the back of the truck. He was healed now. His life was different now. You're happy today because you're not the same. Praise God. You've been filled with the beautiful power of the Holy Spirit. If you've been full of filled with the Holy Spirit, would you wave your hand in the air this morning in Jesus' name? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Turn to somebody. High five five people and tell them how much you love Jesus Christ this morning before we leave in Jesus' name. You've been changed. Amen. You've been changed. You've been changed. High five five people and tell them your ankles and your feet have got strength. Come on. Come on. I want to hear some clicking this morning. Amen. I want to hear some clicking right now. Your ankles and your feet have got some strength. Come on, Brother Johnny. Show me what we got. Show me about my ankles and my feet. Come on. In Jesus' name. Come right up here and show how, how you ought to be. Come on. You was doing it right there. Go ahead and give me a demonstration. Right there. Demonstration. I need it. Come on. Give it to me. Give it to me, Brother Johnny. Give me the ankles and the feet. There we go, in Jesus' name. Come on and put your hands together, church, in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a new day. You got ankle, your feet and ankles have strength this morning, in Jesus' name.